All right, guys, day three, another beautiful day. First task of the morning is we need to get some walls laid off. All right, guys, we got everything laid off, starting to get ICF in the hole. Let me get you caught up to speed a little bit with uh, what we did here. So you heard me mention in the previous video that the ideal way to do this would be a total station or GPS. So basically with a total station, if you guys don't know, is you can set a known point and then basically you turn angles. Um, so you can set up a, a station out here in the yard or, or anywhere over a known point. And it basically calculates all the angles uh, and distances to lay out, lay out the basement. The other option is, is you map it out in GPS and then you have a GPS satellite and you can do it that way. We don't have either one of those, so we have to go a little bit old school. So basically what we did was, um, we got all these offsets in here, but within these offsets, you got to use your imagination. And uh, there's basically a 52 four by 32 rectangle, which is this, this right here. So that's what we did first is we chalked off that large rectangle, which this is one corner of it here. Uh, there's actually a string line or imaginary and it comes back onto the footer over there and then over here we basically got the same thing going down through there so that gives us a very large reference that we know is squared off even though it's a rectangle we know it's squared off so from there we can measure back all of our offsets parallel everything up here we can stretch this line on through on both ends and then measure off our chalk line or string line going through here now over here to get this little area squared up this is a five foot eight offset so we come all the way back here to offset five foot eight and then ran a parallel square line down caught this corner then from there we can measure all of our references over and get everything we need hopefully you guys followed that with all that being said everything is squared up everything fits on the footer everything looks mighty nice and it is time to start stacking some block All right, guys, so as we get rolling stacking here, the first thing we do is go around and place all the corners. And you'll notice that they're all offset. So this is what I call the short end. That's the long end. It's a long end, faces short end. Long end, faces short end. Long end, faces short end. Now, once we get the corner set, we'll come back and start filling in the gaps. Uh, the short walls, you just kind of do what you got to do to make it work. But on these longer walls, especially one like this, typically what you do is you start here, work to the center, and start there, work to the center. I gotta do the math on this, I don't know for sure. The only exception to that rule is, is if the wall stacks out and you don't have a common splice. So let me get that far and I shall explain. All right, so let me show you a situation here. So that block is on the corner, that is on the corner. We got a full eight foot block in here and we basically need 12 inches finish up that gap so if i come over here and measure 12 inches it lands right on that stud it is almost impossible to cut down that stud there, there's just no good way to do it so how do you correct that issue it's pretty simple is you want to leave this factory edge as much as you can so if we bump there and come over and cut here that'd make this block 18 inches which puts us on that line over there. So basically what we have to do is we have to shave off this block, add to our piece we cut, and while well, bam, we are missing all of our studs. There you go guys, check that out. We are making progress. It is starting to look like a basement down here. Long ways to go, but it's starting to look like one. This to me, honestly, these first two courses are by far the most crucial two courses you'll put down. And they're also the most difficult and the most time consuming. So basically what I did is I went around here 
and we got all the walls laid out and i'll explain these common splices a little more as we go on up with the wall but everywhere i got a c on the wall that is a common the other walls stacked out that's usually the biggest hang up question mark um, with everything going is how those commons work out and how to do that because there is multiple different ways to do it and uh it really just depends on the situation and the block and which way is the best but where we go from here is to get these blocks locked in to get true dimensions and lengths and everything you see like right here we got a gap so i need to stack that second block on top of there to close that up and tie everything together so chris is going around and getting all the rebar in uh, and then I'm going to come back around here and we'll put the second course on. Once we put the second course on, it does two things. It establishes the, the pattern and it also locks all the block together so we can get it squared up and foamed down. So, Hey, man, I'm talking to my peeps. <laughs> Possibly killing times. I don't want to shuttle ICF either. So <laughs> we're going to get the rest of this ICF in the hole, get the second course around here. Hopefully get this foam down. So here we go. I was I'll all prepared. prepared oh my goodness. So you're just coming over here for your next can. Put it back in the box. All right, so we got the second second course all on. We went outside, got everything on our chalk line we had earlier. Got our foam down, glued down, however you want to say it. Cleaning's going around and getting on the inside. So from here, now everything is locked together and we got a pattern. So the first course, the third course will be the same. The second course and the fourth course will be the same. So you basically just follow what you're doing before. We've already confused Mr. No, I'm Millennial. not confused. I've rotated the corner. Yes. It's just that lock. Yes. Doesn't have a lock. No, because it's supposed to be cut off here because that's a common. So I'll just cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going around for the third time. Alright guys, we have got four courses up, stacked all the way around. That's usually what our kind of go-to is, is the four courses go up. Then we come back and install bracing. And uh, boy, do we have an exciting surprise for you guys. Check out this. Look at those beauties right there. Bring me in with it. They're awful pretty, Captain. Don't drop them.
Bye, Mike. Man, my new braces and I can't even stand Do you running. remember? Do you guys get a plane? Do we all? Do we all remember when it wasn't 15 minutes ago and he's complaining that none of us were working? Yeah, no, right. actually, Sorry. the comment was, "Can you can you see if you're smart enough to unload the braces?" How'd you end up with my camera? Because <laughs> you said you had to leave. You said you guys aren't working enough, and then you said, "Oh, but I gotta I go." I trust you to handle my new. Oh, now he trusts us. <laughs> uh, well, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Oh. In case you guys didn't know, Mike got some braces here, and Matt and I are trying to figure out how to use them for the first time. Yeah. And Mike left. So that's what we're doing today. All right, guys, I felt absolutely horrible. I had an important meeting pop up that I absolutely could not miss. So I had to leave Matt and Captain alone to do this. But one thing I want to point out is the method they are using to put these braces up against the wall is the method we use with our mono braces. And this is not the easiest way to actually do the plumb wall braces. If you watch some of their videos and some of their literature, uh, basically they're unfolding it as it's up against the wall. It's much easier to lean the brace against the wall at about a 45 degree angle, then unfold the leg and it'll kind of almost kickstand itself and hold itself there. Our mono braces will not do that. They will fall away from the wall and just for, fall flat on the ground. So uh, you'll hear these guys talk about a little bit of a learning curve and I wish I was there to help them out. I could have helped them on this a little bit. But as you guys can see, it did not slow them down. They are true professionals and they were figuring it out. And actually as the uh, camera zooms around, they get a little bit out of frame here. They kind of kind of start getting it uh, getting it figured out but I have used a lot of different bracing systems and this is the one system I haven't used and the one system I'm looking forward to using so uh, stay tuned I'll give you guys my thoughts on the uh, on the system itself all right so definitely a learning curve on those Matt is getting Mike's camera equipment picked up and then so am I and of course we'll get Mike's hoodie picked up I'm sure we'll find his wallet and phone somewhere as well <laughs> we're just picking up after mike jenna will tell you he's just a big toddler anyway that's not what this is about this is about the braces i definitely have some opinions about those but i think i'm gonna leave mike to tell you those opinions we're gonna get the rest of the braces off the back of the truck and then we're calling it a day i don't have a handle i don't know how this is looking all right, guys, we are back for day two of stacking. Check that out. The boys got a lot of the braces up while I was going. Let's go down and check it out, and then uh, we'll tie into the last two courses. Okay. All right, guys, there's what she looks like after we got all the uh, braces up. I wasn't here for most of them. We got some new help. You want to say hi? New help? What's up? Got new help number one, new help number two up there. Take what you can get around here some days. No, <laughs> we're happy to have them. <laughs> happy to have them. I did help. Uh, I did jump in and help put up some of these braces this morning, and uh, they are definitely, definitely different plumb wall bracing system right there. And uh, to be honest with you, there is several things about them I absolutely love. A few things about them I'm not for sure yet, and a couple things that already changed. Does that make sense? But overall, uh, pretty happy with them. I need to. You guys are going to have to hang tight to get a full opinion review on them because I've not used them enough. And I'm not familiar enough with them to uh, give you my full thoughts on them. So we're going to keep on stacking, get this thing ready to pour, and we'll circle back around to the braces for sure. So you guys ready to roll? Yep. Let's, let's do it. it. Check that out, Mr. Millennial. What are we checking out? We are stacked out. We are stacked out. 
We got a box all the way around. Yeah, and now it's fancy. really bright. You see me squinting? So how do you think about staying on these fancy new braces? You know, they're pretty dead gum sturdy compared they're, to my they're, ones. They're There's no shiftiness to it. They're not quite as rickety, that's for sure. They're definitely not rickety, but boy, you gotta watch these. Yes. They didn't deburr these things and they're sharp. You gotta watch them. Definitely some sharp edges. All right, so what's next on our list? Eight feet, sir. Tape measure, right hand why, why side are of your we Why are we measuring eight feet? You gotta explain what you're doing. <clears throat> okay, gotcha. So this wall has a common in it. You can see the boards down there towards the bottom. The straps Which are together. Which the common is one splice all the way common up. Common is one splice all the way up. Now I measured that earlier, but now we've stacked four more courses on it. So we gotta make sure it's eight feet from that outside corner to this inside corner. And then we can strap this common to hold it all together at yep. eight feet. And then we'll strap her all the way up and down. Oh my side. gosh. Are you taking the dummy in? I am. I am so proud of you. What do you got? Well, get me off the bubbles. Picky, picky, picky. Yeah, I'm picky. It's gotta be right. We're a half inch. I need to hold that tight. Yep. As soon as you pull it tight, right. I'll throw a screw to it because that'll make it. That's it. All right, Mister Melinda, you gonna explain to explain to the world your problem? It's like right. Doctor Phil. We're a half inch short. So this is why we check measurements top and bottom on commons yes. because by the time we got to the top of this wall. This distance was a half inch short. I do not have braces in this wall to push it out. So this is what you use. A wedge me. A wedge me. Just shove that down the crack there. And then use a hammer. Use a hammer. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Let me get your taping in measure. I need uh, three eighths of an inch yet. Keep going, going. Hit that outside one now. One more. One more. Don't be afraid of it. Put your purse Inside. Down. Would you quit? That's perfect. Here, catch. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, now we'll put our collars on. Now we can screw away. Screw away. All right, guys, it's actually the next day. Let me get your car to speed a little bit. We were thrashing yesterday because we were hoping to pour today at noon, but unfortunately we could not get a pump truck and a batch plant to line up and cross paths where they could be here at the same time. So we've got pushed off to tomorrow. So that makes today a little bit more of a leisure day and not absolute total chaos. So let me get you guys caught up to speed a little bit. When we left you yesterday, we were going around and getting all the commons uh, strapped and ready to go for being ready to pour. And a couple things I want to point out on those uh, commons let me let me hop down there real quick and i'll kind of show you all right guys and if you got a common splice the ideal place to have it is in the center of the wall this is a 20 foot wall it's approximately 10 feet from both ends that's not always the case it don't always work out that as, way as i'll show you in a minute whenever you put this strapping on one thing you got to pay attention to is there's actually a little bitty short piece right here so whenever i put this piece of strapping on I want to make sure it'll span across that and grab a full block on the other side. Now, the other thing you run into from time to time is you end up with a, you do end up with a common somewhat close to the wall. What I always like to do is, is make sure you go all the way over, grab the corner, the short block, and over here and span all the way across that. If you're gonna have an issue that's gonna be right in here, and what'll tend to happen is you'll get a real small little bow in this corner. Now a brace on the inside will also help that uh will also help your calls on that to kind of act as a stiff back and uh hold that into place now another place i want to show a little bit about the strapping uh is around this window so if you guys look at this side of the window there's a stud right there so strapping on this side is not that crucial you just got to hold the buck in place if you look over here on this side the stud's way back here strapping on this side is much more crucial because you don't want that piece to pop and come out of there so mandatory to have it every course in the center on this side this side here you're just gonna have enough to hold the buck in place and like up there it's optional that one there does not need to be there the other thing is where this window falls they got the top web cut out of this new durham so you got a big hole right here concrete's gonna push through there really badly we'll have to cap this off we also put a board right here to keep this from folding over on the inside. This one here actually fell the same way 
up on top, which is what that board is for. Now, if this would have fell to where the block got cut down here and this web was close to the top, that strapping would not be necessary as well. One other thing I'll point out real quick is this is what we call a three line common. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the strapping on this common needs to catch at least four studs because you are you have the same issue you have next to that window where it wants to pop out and you gotta keep that block nice and flush across that common. That is the exact opposite scenario on this particular common here is you have a stud here and a stud here. So really you only have to catch about two studs right there. This one here, I would like to see it maybe catch a few more because of its relationship to the corner. But uh, long story short, not all commons are created equal. All right, so the last thing to do with those commons before we pour is going through and foaming them. We always foam them last. That way, if you need to make any adjustments to them, you can and you're not fighting the foam. That common there is extremely tight. That's a tight one. All right, so now that the commons are all in place, everything's strapped off, we need to do what we call the pre-pour alignment. And uh, basically, the first step of that is, especially a basement that has all these corners on it, basically what I'll do first things first is go around with a level and check all the corners and make sure we don't have anything skewed or too far out of whack. I've actually already done that. Everything's, uh, everything's really close. We did have to adjust one corner back there. We actually adjusted from the outside. I'll kind of uh, show, you, show you that. But uh, yeah, everything is, uh, everything is really, really close. So from there, now that we got all of our corners set, We'll do a couple different things. Matt's actually got a string line. I don't know if you guys can see that string line up there. That's what we'll use for our final adjustment. But our goal for right now is, especially on these longer walls, these 32 foot walls, we want that wall leaning in on the brace. Um, I'm assuming these braces are just like any other brace I've used. It pushes a lot better than it pulls. And it helps you control that wall a lot better. So basically I'll go down through there with a the level and double check myself on the string. And I'll take those braces and bring them in where the wall is just kind of setting back on it. So. Pretty much that simple guys. Now after I've done that, I'll work my way all the way around the basement. I'll go up above, just kind of give it the good eyeball check and make sure we're in good shape. But let me finish getting these braces in check and I'll uh, give you guys a view from the top side and kind of give you my initial thoughts on the uh, plumb wall braces and what I think. All right guys, hop around the top side here after I got those braces adjusted. I don't know if you can look down there. See that just that slightest little bow it's got in it? That's absolutely perfect. That's just how I like to see it before we uh, pour. This one here is kind of the same way. It's a shorter wall, so I don't have near as much bow in it. But right there, right there on the uh, edge of it, one out there in the middle. Man, they're looking good. They are looking good. I'm going to walk around here and check the rest of them. We'll go down there and have a little, uh, little chat about braces. All right, guys, we're closing in on the end of the day. And I think we are poor ready. Tomorrow we'll find out for sure. But before we wrap this video up, I want to go all... Uh, Go all brace, brace nerd on you guys and kind of give you guys my thoughts on the ICF bracing in general and these particular braces here. First off, if you're going to be pouring walls, I think it's worth the time and effort to either find some braces and rent them or at the very least uh, get the, they, they make like a bracket key. I think it's called like by Z bracket uh, where they got the turnbuckles and the brackets you can put on two by fours and get by. That'd be what I'd consider more of the homeowner. Uh, I'm going to pour ICF once and then report again. That'll work fine. If you're a contractor and you're going to pour more than probably four basements a year, I think you need to seriously consider getting some bracing. Uh, having the proper bracing on an ICF job minimizes labor and improves the quality of the pour tremendously. Uh, it can be done without. I 100% do not advise doing without. I have poured one time without bracing. And I have been back to fix multiple jobs that were poured without bracing. Uh, I'll never do it again. Now, with all that being said, there is multiple different types of bracing on the market. The, um, I don't know the name of it, but like the baseline, bottom line, 
is you buy a bracket, you buy a turnbuckle, you use a 2x4, you make some stakes. Um, that's good for a one-off job or an occasional job. Uh, if you're going to be in the ICF business, do not recommend uh, going that route at all. Uh, there's a couple contractors around here that use that, and it's kind of hit and miss. Um, we currently use mono brace. From what I understand, mono brace is not even in business no more and not even an option. Um, I've got some issues with it, but for the most part, it has actually been a really good brace. Um, next one on the list would be giraffe brace. Uh, giraffe brace is still active, still goes. Uh, one huge advantage of giraffe bracing is uh, it comes apart in a bunch of different pieces and it makes it really easy for one person to assemble and install and it's very very adjustable as far as the walkboard height with absolute ease because you have to take it apart and put it back together so whenever you put it back together you just put the walkboard wherever you want uh, one thing that I absolutely hate about draft bracing is there's a whole bunch of pieces it, it, <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's a struggle it's a struggle to keep track of all of them a lot of them are specialty pieces. It's just not a pin you can run to the hardware store and get. It's this, it's this U-clip, and um, it's a lot, a lot of pieces to keep track of. Um, the next one on the list would be the plumb wall braces, which we have here. And uh, it's kind of a hybrid between the two, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's easy to adjust the height, but it's also one piece. Uh, you pull two pins out, and it all comes together. So... Let me hop up here real quick. We'll go over, uh, we'll kind of go over the brace and I'll show you some of the uh, differences and some of the features. Some of the things I really, really, really like about them and a few of the quirks I'm not for sure about yet. All right, guys, first things first, I'm gonna call this the crate or the pallet. And a lot of things about this I really, really like over some of the other ones. I'm not for sure if I like it as much as one I custom built because I can get my walk boards and a few more braces on it than this one, but this is much lighter and much more easy and manageable. Um, one thing cool they will do, you can see they put the Dirt Perfect on the end for me. They got their plumb wall logo on the other end. Uh, from what I understand, if you're a customer and order that, they will do their best to get your logo on one end. So that's just a really cool little touch. The other thing that this thing has that my other one don't is uh, it's all built out of angle. This is actually built out of an uh, inch and a half uh, tubing. It's made to work and be forked either way. And it also has the lifting eyes on it. These are a big deal. Uh, my draft bracing rack does not have that on it. And it's, uh, <laughs> let's just say it's a struggle. We'll leave it at that. So overall, I really, really, really like the, uh, the setup as far as the crate, how they come packaged, how they lay down in there. These are some of the braces we didn't use. They just lay down in there flat. They lay a two by four across there. And I think there's four levels. I believe there's 20 braces per crate. Pretty sure on that. Hope I'm not wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Pretty sure it's 20 per crate. But uh, it's simple. It's effective. It's nice. The plumb wall ICF bracing, the dirt perfect on one end. It's a nice little touch. It, it's definitely a nice little touch. So uh, as far as that's concerned, it's definitely a win. You guys have seen the brace rack that I built. I do like having my walk boards in there. It's kind of a, I can get uh, 39 braces, 39 mono braces on that. Uh, I can get enough walk boards to do about 220 feet of wall, and I can set that down there one shot with a Traco. Now, with all that being said, it weighs uh, about 4,500 pounds, uh, maybe close to 5,000 if it's loaded right. I don't have a weight on these, but if I had to guess, they're probably about half that. I think the brace itself weighs about 54 pounds per brace times 20 plus the crate. <laughs> it's too light today to do math, so you guys will have to figure it out from there. But uh, nevertheless, that's uh, definitely a, a good setup and a, a well-improved setup from what I'm used to in the past. Now, on the brace itself, um, like I said, this is the plumb wall bracing system. They're made in Canada. They sent these braces to me to uh, demo. So the first thing you'll notice is everybody goes to their adjustable with a drill. Um, so you turn this nut, it adjusts it in and out. But what that location does, one thing I've noticed is two things on the mono brace this turnbuckle actually attaches right here so you've got this angle down to here and with it being attached out here and having this little truss system that locks in it gives it a lot more leverage on the wall it makes it a lot easier to manipulate the wall now i'm curious to see how it does in poor conditions tomorrow but just kind of messing with them and, and looking them over today i really like uh, the leverage 
that we gain from this right here. The second thing is, is there a lot more adjustability. The stroke of the threads to adjust is probably five or six inches more. So you spend less time trying to find the right hole and, and, and twisting and carrying on. And if anybody's wondering how that locks in, they got a little bitty, uh, little bitty bracket right here. But the second thing this bracket does being mounted out here like this is it makes this brace much more stable whenever you're walking on it whenever you're walking on those mono braces uh this is back here and this lever just comes out there's nothing to hold it right here and uh, whenever you're up there on the catwalk walking on these things it's a crazy how much more stable they feel and uh how much more secure they feel you walk on the mono braces long enough you just kind of get used to it but there is a huge huge difference in the stability of these versus the other one now one slight little downfall i will point out is on a mono brace the brace only comes to about right here so you got a, probably an extra 10 to 12 inches here well i'll get you in trouble a little bit is whenever i laid off the braces i had a few in the bad spot because uh I, I, i'm not too good to show you my stakes so i'll kind of show you uh, we should have a brace over here in this corner and we still could but I laid this brace off too far that way So it makes you kind of think how far out of the corner you got to be because these two braces will interfere with each other Anybody that's poured much ICF will uh, Will understand that the other thing that I absolutely love about these braces is the adjustability of them and how easy they can be adjusted so if I wanted to adjust the height of this walkboard, now this walkboard right here for what we're doing on nine foot walls is about uh, right out four foot off the footer. But uh, where this comes into play is we used to do a bunch of um, bi-level pours. So we'd pour our basement 12 feet and then we'd hop up and we'd pour uh, the upstairs somewhere around seven, eight feet. Well, your walkboard height needs to change. On mono braces to change that walkboard height, it's uh, a guy for almost, four or five hours it's a job uh, especially if they've been used and tweaked and, and got some concrete in them it's a job but these here uh, the way the pins are set up and everything basically you can pull out two pins there's a pin right here you pull out you pull out a pin right here that whole bracket will slide up and down that wall and uh, I think we adjusted every brace in this basement in about 20 minutes uh, I'm not sure what the proper way to do it is we leaned it up against the wall screwed it off Pulled the pins out, slotted it wherever we wanted, staked her off. It worked absolutely amazing. Now, the other thing is, is the options that come with this thing. This is the handrail bracket they got. Uh, you can get two, looks like at least two by sixes in there. But another thing they did is this hole where it goes in is actually the same size as a two by four. So if you didn't want to buy this, you could just stick a two by four in there, put a couple screws in it and go with it. So they're definitely thinking ahead on that. The other thing is, is they got these brackets, and I don't know how many times over the years I wish I would have had these brackets. And that bracket will go and basically clip onto that rail, just like that. And you're like, well, why would I ever use that thing? Uh, two scenarios come to my head right off the bat. One is uh, pouring gables. We used to pour houses, we'd pour a gable. So you'd have a, a, a wall going up and coming back down. Well, with those brackets, you can step your step your walk board up safely i'll be the first to admit what we did in the past was probably not that safe second is that sometimes you have pores where your footer steps down but your walk board and your top of your wall needs to keep going straight that gives you the option to do that very clever little design secondly this is actually an extension a stiff back extension so i'm not going to climb up there right now but this here will slide in the top of that rail then you can take another rail and put on top of it. And I'm pretty sure the spec says you can pour a 24, 24 foot tall wall with this brace system. Now, along with that also comes an extension to your foot, which it, it's all interchangeable. It all locks together. It's, uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, I don't know of any other brace on the market uh, that has that many options and that much adjustability built into the brace. And I've never, I build custom homes. I've never personally ever built the same house twice. So I need a lot of options and a lot of adjustability. A commercial guy that's pouring a, a, a hotel, for example, it's just leapfrogging floors doing the same thing. That may not mean that much to him, to him, but to me, that adjustability is huge. I'm sitting here thinking back of all the jobs I've poured over the years, which is hundreds. 
and thinking, man, I could have used that on that job, or oh my God, how nice would that have been on that job? Eh, it comes into play a lot. Now, with all that being said, I will have to admit, there is a couple things about them that uh, I'm not over excited about. One of them is just, uh, I think it would take care of itself in time. I don't know if you guys can see right there where that r weld is rubbed off. We actually had a hard time getting them all open because that tolerance between this and here was so tight. And uh, we actually had to take the grinder to a few and grind that weld off to get them to open up properly. I didn't want to, uh, you can actually see where it rubbed right there. Got a pretty good little little gouge in it. So not a, not a huge deal whenever you're trying to learn these braces and not smash your fingers. You're like, why won't it come? And then it comes all at once and you're like, eh, that's why. Like I said, it, it's just something uh, I think it's worth pointing out. Not a big deal, but uh, kind of a little bit of a nuisance. The second one is this one here only has slotted holes going this way. On the mono braces and the draft braces, it has, they alternate. This hole goes this way, this hole goes this way, this hole, this hole. Well, if you get the brace straight on the stud every time, perfect. You have no problems. But we didn't realize how much we actually counted on those slotted screws. I'll give an example of what usually happens is you go up about four courses, put your brace on, and then go up the rest of the way. And sometimes in four courses from walking on and everything else, you don't get your brace perfectly straight. Well, with that slotted hole, it gives you an inch and a half, two inches either way to kind of kind of make up for being off a little bit. Because it don't, it's not overly crucial. It's perfectly plumb this way. So we, we found ourselves taking a few braces down, readjusting them, and putting them back up because we didn't have a slotted hole option on the horizontal plane. We just had them on the vertical plane. But this one here is probably my biggest, um, my biggest gripe about it is I'm not overly thrilled about this foot. Um, I'm assuming this foot is made to where a two by four or something can go to stake down in there. I've never used a two by four to stake on it. What I, what I would personally like to see is one and two holes right here where I could use a rebar pin with a washer on it stake it down directly behind the foot because we've already tried to push on these a few times they want to rotate and pull a little bit and i don't see the point of putting two pieces of rebar in most people will drive a rebar in an angle this way and then re drive a rebar angle in the other way and then you got twice as many pieces of the rebar to pull out and that does not hold it tight it gives you a little bit of slop in there and whenever you've got a really long wall that wall will tend to lean left or right or in or out and pull that slop out of there. The tighter you can get those pinned down, the better. The other issue with the foot is uh, it's a lot thinner metal uh, than what my draft braces or my mono braces have. And these things take a beating down here because eventually you'll end up prying on them trying to get a stake out or somebody will hit them with a sledgehammer trying to drive a stake in. And, and these will kind of get tweaked a little bit. So the shape of that foot and the thickness of metal on that foot is a little bit of concern for me. I might be overthinking it. It may not matter, but this right here is what we use. It's 5 8 rebar. It's got a washer on it, T-handle on the top. We got them in multiple different legs for multiple different ground conditions. We have used these for years and uh, they work awesome. The last thing you want to do is not have that foot securely fastened. That equals trouble on poor day. That's very important, so keep that in mind. But, with all that being said, I'm extremely impressed with the blade braces. Um, um, I'll give you guys a report tomorrow how they actually operate on poor day, because that's when it's crucial. But uh, for the most part, if uh, <laughs> I can already tell you right now, if I was in the market to buy new braces, uh, it would be it would be it'd be these braces hands down. These are the Cadillac or the ICF wall braces. The adjustability, the adjustability. Uh, alone has got me sold. That That is, anybody that pours a whole lot of ICF knows how big a deal that is. Uh, the second thing, which is a very close second, is um, minimal pins. All the pins are the same, which is a big deal. And they're they're basically a mono brace. They're all built into one. So they fold up, they store, you're not trying to keep pe keep track of pieces and parts. So Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Hopefully you stay tuned tomorrow to see how the pour goes because that's when we'll really find out uh, find out what we got. But uh, that's going to be it for now, guys. We're going to wrap this one up. We're going to call it a day. We'll be back tomorrow to pour. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, we'll catch you.
on the next one.